I got a question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have a Do you have questions that you want to ask us, or are you just winging it? I have a few things written down here. Okay. Yes, um, I, I, I would curious. love to get into the fallen stuff if we could, um, because that was something that you started, um, and then you eventually the. I don't know if you sold the trademark or what happened with that. I'm not quite sure about the story, but it's it's now again fallen is re. Is risen. Is risen. <laughs> revamped. Yeah. yeah. And, and then Cole, you skate for them. I do. And how do you feel about that now? How do I feel about Cole skating for it? No, I mean like just the... the, the All right, well, let me let me tell you the story. Please, please, please. Yeah, I'll try and keep it and fast forward. Okay. And there's an interesting element to earlier you saying that did I get a unanimous decision on Cole mm. joining the team? So when uh, Cole got on zero... Um, some of the guys were like, I'm not, I don't really see this a fit. John Alley was one of them said, I don't really see this as a fit, but he's like, man, it's your company. I'll support it. You know, anyway, so we start falling, um, next year. So that's 2002 when he, Cole gets on zero. Mm -hmm. And, um, I start falling in 2003. Alley was the first team rider. He was on flow for Circa and I was leaving Circa and my shoe was the only shoe he rode. My shoe was going with me and we we're going to start something where I was going to start a new brand. And oh, you're actually taking your shoe from Circa and going to redo it on Fallen? Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And so, and also I was going to give, I was going to be there for John. John is very particular about what he skated. He wanted like a certain density of rubber. The toe height had to be a certain height and he's an am at this point. Like he was just so particular about everything. So he knew that I would be willing to work with him on his particulars. So he came to fall in with me. He was the first team rider, then Billy Marks and Josh Harmony. Oh. And then, you know, I'm now going on tour with Cole regularly because we're on zero together. And Cole is complaining and, or just sharing with me his frustrations at Circa. Mm -hmm. He's pro now. They're working on a pro <clears throat> shoe. They tell him that his pro shoe is going to be a team model, something that he's been working on them, working on designing. I'm sorry if I'm taking the story from you. Is that pretty accurate? Uh, yeah. Wait, they were going to give you a team shoe? <laughs> No. What did you just say? No, he had designed no. a shoe. I designed that, a shoe. That seemed like it was going to be his pro model shoe, but then it was ending up that... They made it a team shoe. They were going to make it a team shoe. Got so you. before that came out, he was telling me those frustrations, and I said, why don't we take elements of that shoe? Why don't you come ride for Fallen? We'll make a shoe for you that's exactly what you want. And we'd already had a, you know, a year and a half of working together at Zero, and we already had a rapport that was really working. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he said yes. You know, and um, ironically, Ali was like, hey, man, you know, you you put Cole on zero. I don't really have much to say about it. Now you're putting him on Fallen 2. This feels weird because this was like, I didn't really see this as a good fit. Hmm. I don't really have something personally against Cole, but I don't want to be on two brands with the dude. And I was like, OK. Um, and he's like, you know what? I just got a call from Circa the other day. What do you think about me entertaining going to ride for Circa? And I was like, okay, um, let me think about that. Anyway, Cole was in a contract at Circa. <laughs> Allie was in a contract at Fallen. And then Raul Reese, the owner of Circa, the dude who you know I communicated with when I rode for Circa, hit me up and was like, hey, what do you think about doing a trade? <laughs> wow. And the first time I heard this we, actually happened skateboarding. Straight I know. <laughs> There's straight up a trade. Okay. Yeah. And he's like, wow. he's like, Cole has another year on his contract. Allie has another year on his contract. How about we just rip up the contracts and we'll take Allie and you take Cole? And I said, did you know about this? I completely forgot about this. If I ever did know about it. Wow. And I like, went, I'm hearing it. I'm with you guys. I'm like, <laughs> what happens next? <laughs> Very I, impressive. I went to, I went to, I went to Allie and said, Allie, I've talked to those dudes. They would love to have you if that's something you want to do. And they're willing to let Cole out of his contract. I'm down to let you out of your contract. And he's like, I would love that, and I'd be stoked if that was cool with you. I love Zero. I don't ever want anything to happen at Zero. I want to ride for Zero forever. Okay. And if you're cool with this, I'd be hyped to go to Circa. And so I hit Cole up and was like, Cole, these dudes are down. They're down to let you out of your contract, and Allie's going to go to Circa, and you'll ride for you'll ride for Fallen. And Billy and Billy and Josh were the coolest, easiest going dudes ever, and they were just like, Yeah, heck yeah, Chris Cole heck yeah let's do it and they're like bum john's gotta go but yeah yeah, yeah. you know and john if john's not feeling it then did you know. know about that about john not wanting to be on two yeah, yeah. like i did oh you talk did you talk to him about it i mean uh, i just i remember it was I our conversation i'm sure no i did i called him about it 
Oh, you did. And I said, "Hey, this is this is a tough conversation." <laughs> and, yeah. Um, but it's. I mean, I think that that's not the. I I don't think that that's the weirdest thing to happen. I think it's an odd thing that we hear about. Now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We hear about it, but that happens all the time. Just right. usually everybody just like mm-hmm. zips, their, zips their whip. Yeah. Sometimes it's just they people feel threatened. I don't yeah. know. Sometimes they, the com- def- it's more competition. That's definitely a part of it it's, to a degree. You know, I yeah. would, certain elements. I would agree that that was maybe a part of it. John was the for first sure. team rider on Fallen, and yeah. you know he had my undivided attention, and he knew I had a you know not a soft spot for Cole, but he knew I'd gone out on a limb already for Cole, mm. and maybe he thought that you know Cole would go above him in the tier. But what it really did is it it, pres- it it eased the relationship with John because John was very particular. I was already trying to work with him on concaves and shape tweaks and graphic tweaks. And I also was working with him at, at Fallen and it was too much pressure for for me, for being one person to manage both of his, you know, uh, mm. needs. Gotcha. And so it basically freed me from one and it made our relationship at zero better. And he saw that. He saw that that was going to happen. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And his career was taken off. He had just done that flip to flip to slide, flip to grind part, and you know, circa the kickflip gun. Circa pretty much like offered him a pro shoe like a, as a rookie, and I was pretty much doing the same thing for Cole. But I had front row seats to what Cole, what was next for Cole. Gotcha. I knew what we were working on. We, I knew what we just did for Dying to Live and how fast we did it. I was there filming in Barcelona with Lee Dog, and saw it all. And I was like, I know where this is going, and I believe absolutely that we could do a pro shoe with him in the second year of fallen so that was 2000 okay. 2004 is when he got on fallen and the shoe came out shortly after we got we went into production right away mm-hmm. because we had his circa circa sample as a starting point so the jump off for the trooper was let's build okay. on the circa shoe and they can come out with a team shoe all they want which they we'll, did yeah, right we'll mm. make it different yeah they did okay. and he even had a color yeah, way Ra- ram and Deta used to wear it all the time okay huh crazy yeah. but that that always is helps you like if you gotta if you have something to work with and cole already had a design that he'd mm-hmm. fed them and then i you know or that he'd pitch them and then i could take that as a starting point and then i could work with him and that was where the trooper came from i mean it happens all the time rick howard took his shoe to dc yeah, yeah when okay. he went to dc yeah. totally. um let's not just brush over the first <laughs> trade because that's, pretty, yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive. I'd never heard of anything like yeah. that. They're talking about contracts and like, yeah, let's, let's, let's just figure this out. But yeah. it's almost like both kind of, that's kind of both sick. skaters wanted it. It's so really, It's really rare that both skaters and both company owners want it. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, yeah, totally. really, never heard of that before. But yeah. for you guys as owners to have that conversation in the first place. I, I think it worked out because I'd only, I'd only quit Circa a year before and it was amicable. Oh, it was because they were financially strapped. They couldn't afford to pay me. They hadn't been paying me. And I said, hey, I want to do my own company, you know, and they were like, you know, I'm not going to ride for a competitor. I'm going to do what they did. You know, whenever someone leaves your company to go do what they what what you've done, you got to respect that. You know, so and I gave them six months to sell off my shoes and I started planning Fallen, you know, in private meetings while I still rode for Circa. Right. So I don't know if this has ever, maybe it's been done. I don't know. I'm not trying to act like I invented the wheel over here. But the day my contract ended with Circa, Fallen launched the next day. <laughs> the next day. Very strategic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some would say that was planned. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Yeah. And we, and at DC, Ken and Damon believed so much in what we were doing or what I was doing or what I was bringing and what we were planning to launch that they just bought blind inventory and brought it in and no one knew of the brand until the day. And you could buy it today. Because they started, they started helping you manufacture and so, distribute? So I went to Ken and Damon. So here's the story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was going to ride for Circa. I was leaving audio because K2 owned it and I felt it was corny because K2 was a rollerblade and ski brand and it just felt every trip I'd gone on and the things that I dealt with. Chris Miller was amazing. Jeff Taylor was team manager. All the riders were amazing, Mm -hmm. but I couldn't get past the fact that I rode for K2. And um, anyway, I was leaving audio. Circa made me an amazing offer. Around that time, Kelly Bird talked about this. I got an offer from Lakai. Yes, Um, that's right. But they were gonna make me an owner at Circa and they were paying me whatever Muska was getting. I think I talked about this in a previous Ooh, episode. Okay. They okay. asked me what I wanted, and I just said, whatever you're giving Chad. And they said, yes. 
They said yes. So before I signed that contract, though, <laughs> before I signed that contract, I had the utmost respect for Ken and Damon. And so I called Ken and Damon. I knew this was the peak of my career. I called Ken and Damon and said, look, I'm about to sign a contract with Raw Reese at Circa. I've heard mixed reviews on Raw. I don't have any personal experience. And would you guys have any interest in starting a shoe company, a second shoe company to DC? And right at that point, they were in a lawsuit with the previous partner, Clay, oh, to, yeah. to divide the shares and to change the ownership. And they said, we're not in the position to do it now. If this opportunity comes along in the future, please feel free to hit us up. Mm. So when things started going, on, going south at Circa financially, I reached back out to Ken and Damon. It had been three years. I reached back out and said, hey, you know, we talked three years ago. I did the Circa thing. It was amazing. It was awesome. I got to travel, do all these things. They're going through financial struggles because they had a snowboard brand. They gave terms on like a whole season of snowboards and it was the worst season of snow in decades. And they were hung out to dry on oh. all their on all their money. So oh, they, they were strapped for cash because of the snowboard, gotcha. snowboard business. Okay. And so we weren't getting paid at Circa and Chad and I were getting, we had the highest salaries and we were the ones that were feeling it the most. So at any rate, I went back to Ken and Damon and said, hey, would you guys have any interest on starting a new brand? Things are going south at Circa, and I would like to find a home and do something new. I have a vision for what I want to do. Anyway, they said yes, and um, now's a great time. Come meet with us. And we met, and we launched Fallen in the beginning through D.C., you launched mm. it through DC, but only a year later they sold DC. They, they and sold that, in nine months. In nine months, and yeah. they didn't want Fallen to no, go with them. They they did want Fallen, so oh, they Quicks did. Quicksilver bought it. Yeah, I had a clause in my contract that said if more than fifty one percent of the company sold, I could take Fallen on. My Ooh, own. you wrote that into the. That's smart. I didn't write it, but they knew they may be in a position to sell, and that may be the best way to get where they wanted to go. And so they talked about it, and they were mm. transparent. Hey, we may sell the company okay. someday. And I was like, well, I don't want to automatically just be owned by whoever you sell to. So how can we talk? How can we put something in the contract that, you know, doesn't get me stuck in some right. long term deal with somebody I didn't with sign K2. up for? With K2 again. <laughs> with <Yeah. laughs> Quicksil K2. Quicksilver this time. <laughs> anyway, so Quicksilver bought it. And I was like, I don't want to sell to Quicksilver. I'm super hyped on running my own brand. Mm. And I just left K, you know, K2 a couple years ago. Yeah. I didn't want to be involved in the corporate thing and I wanted to do my own thing. So you brought it to... I brought it to zero. Zero, yeah, right. And then we created what we were doing there. Yeah, 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 yeah. For a long time. Yeah, so I, I don't know if you want me to fast forward that. Well, yeah, I want to fast forward because like, I think you know, nowadays with Chris being on Fallen mm -hmm. now, and then you kind of, I don't know if you have anything to do with Fallen. I don't know if you sold the trade, but I don't know what yeah, happened I'll there. I'll give you a quick explanation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be great. So 2009, 10, you know, the financial bubble burst Ooh. and it was, it was rough everywhere. The footwear landscape was changing radically around that time. 11 and 12 were really tough. Uh, Nike, Adidas, Vans, Converse were taking over the wall. At what, skate shops. what year did uh, the Pack Sun thing uh, implode? Also, was that a part of it? Uh, I, we weren't in Pack Sun. So no, okay, it didn't affect mm -hmm. us. Okay, gotcha, but gotcha. No, that was two thousand eight. That was eight. Two thousand eight. Okay, um, but it was just getting worse and worse. The skate footwear landscape was getting really, really difficult for core endemic skate brands, mm -hmm. and you know, rightfully so. Those other guys had amazing marketing. They had you know all the money and they had the resources and they made great shoes. So, you know, I wasn't in the position to see all that at the time. I just felt like we were being attacked, which, you know, is kind of the defensive play. Which that was where my mindset was. Mm -hmm. um, at any rate, I was trying to do everything I could at that time to keep the brand going. Um, but we had a pretty big operation at that point. I had bit off more than I could chew on a bad day. And so we had a lot of overhead that I really couldn't reverse from that fast. And so it got to be a point where we were... You know, I also, uh, I will admit this, I built, I built and remodeled, or I remodeled a big house at this time period. Okay. So I took the first money I'd ever taken out of the company, out oh. of the company at this time. So some cash that I, I had taken out of the company, we then needed because we were going into financial crisis. Oh. And so I basically, I borrowed money. I borrowed a million dollars from the factory. Pretty big. From the factory? From the factory. Okay. Yeah, this isn't unheard of. This happens a lot. For sure. So if the company falls on hard times and they need, they need financial support, the factory will give them a million dollars in terms, which doesn't cost them a million dollars, so they get a pretty good deal on it. You know, okay. maybe it costs them 750 grand, but they got a million, a million dollar loan on paper. Okay. So they gave us a million dollars in terms, and that's 
you know, several seasons of footwear that we could make without money going out. And then we had, there was a clause that they could turn that, um, that loan into equity if they wanted. And so if the company recovered and started doing really well, they could turn their million dollars plus interest into equity and own a portion of, of the entities that were offered and that were signed up as collateral. So at the time, zero mystery fallen everything and black box was all signed for collateral on that million dollar loan so they would have been okay owners of everything if i do not they they would have been a percentage percentage owner they would have had a percentage ownership of all brands Mm -hmm. if they wanted to activate that so we went down the road one year two year three years it wasn't getting better it was getting worse so interest is accumulating and the brands are selling less and less and it gets to a gets to a point where you know there's we're at a crossroads um, and some of the riders start leaving. Cole goes to DC. Some things start shaking up, and we still have a really big overhead. Mm-hmm. So the industry is getting shook even more. Fallen sales are going down. I'm we're laying. I'm laying off my friends. You know, myself and the management crew were laying people off at Black Box. It was a really tough time. It's rough. A lot of that had to do with the fact that I committed to this massive overhead. So I'm trying to. I'm, this is my opportunity to take it in the teeth here. I'm, I made some irreversible changes that I couldn't. I couldn't turn around from in a short period of time, which I'll never do again, obviously. Sure. I lost, <laughs> Learned your lesson. I lost a lot. <clears throat> so eventually, Black Box is not sustainable. I end up closing Black Box down. And then at this point, you know, we've, the employees went from like 100 to like six. Wow. <laughs> yeah, over like a three year period. That warehouse you had down there was huge. It was massive. Huge. It was like a Walmart. It was yeah. insane. Yeah. Sure. It was yeah. insane. That's one of the best skate parks so we were skating sold, to. Sold, yeah, the, real, sold yeah. the real estate and liquidated what I could, uh-huh. um, but I still now owed this factory this money. I licensed the brands just to help me recover from the emotional toil of this whole process. Everything I had built was kind of on the rocks. I licensed Zero and Fallen to dwindle. Oh, yeah. I, I did, remember that. I did a five-year license with, to dwindle. And they had the means with Globe there to be able to turn, to give Fallen the best possible chance being already having so much footwear experience in the building. Right. And then because Zero was different than their brands, it gave them something to offer shops in order to help shops that may have not been strong where Zero customers were strong. It all made sense, right? Sure. At any rate, we made the best shoes over the next two years with Dwindle that we had ever made but it still wasn't working. Mm. I was like begging my friends that own skate shops to take the shoes. And it was to a point where we couldn't meet minimums anymore. Wow. And so I now have the person I loaned the money to coming and going, wait, you shut black box down. That was part of the guarantor on my loan. And now you're with someone else. How are you going to pay me back? So they filed lawsuits against me and each one of the individual brands. Oh. And so at this point I'm analyzing the market Fallen is it's not looking good for Fallen, and now I have this this million dollar loan is at one point four million dollars because the interest has gotten it to one point four. Mm-hmm. So I I owe the factory one point four million, and Zero and Fallen are the only two brand Zero Fallen and Mystery are the only two brands that I still own. So I'm trying to figure out how I can get out of this and how what what's the best route to still have a life in some of this. Sure. So it's like goes from the best case scenario to worst case scenario in five years. At any rate, that's quick. I'll wrap this up. So we go into negotiations and I settle for signing over the trademarks mm-hmm. um, for the debt, paying a cash settlement. And that was it. That was and it. And so I shut Fallen down, signed over the trademarks. And Fallen wasn't working anyway. It was like right. dwindle. We, they'd been pouring money into it. It wasn't working for them. It wasn't working for me. And so we, we closed Fallen down. And then I handed over the trademark signed over the trademarks to the factory okay. the factory held on to them for two years and we had a licensor and uh, our licensee in argentina that had been licensing fallen when went through black box oh, okay and they expressed interest to the manufacturer that they would be interested in, bu- in buying the trademarks so they bought the trademarks relaunched in south america it went well then they i think planned on Europe and it was being received well. And this is five years. So mm. it basically gave the market like us enough time to want something like Fallen Again and for that nostalgia to come bubbling sure, to the surface. Okay, yeah. okay. And then they had plans to relaunch in the United States. Um, they hired my ex-partner, Chad, to help launch that project. And um, he assembled, he went back and assembled the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, he came to me and asked what my thoughts were. I was like, man, I, you know, you do you. Like, 
it's that's you what know. it is. What Wait, it did is. they ask you to be a part of it, or they did ask me to be a part of it, but um, they offered me five hundred bucks a month, so I declined. <laughs> <laughs> I kindly declined. I, respect, I, respect, <laughs> I respectfully declined. So, I, and at that point, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I know I didn't want to go from owning a company, and, and there's a lot of ego in here too. I'll admit that. I owned a comp or I started a company, owned a company, saw it at its peak, and then was gonna come as a team rider with mm. very little influence over the company and ride for him for five hundred bucks. Sure, sure. That just seemed like I'd I'd rather not do that. Yeah. So I um, I, I, can, and, I understand. Yeah, mm. and around sure. this time around this time, you know, I'd already been talking to Angel at Stray and yeah. um, he was doing something new and, you know, he wanted Musk and I to be involved. So it, it just the timing wasn't good for me, but the fact that they were able to call Chris and Tommy and, you know, the team, Billy and the team, team riders that used to ride for it. And some of those guys, you know, were either in, in flux or in between shoe deals. Mm -hmm. And, um, they were able to get the band back together. But your original question was, how does that feel for me? It's sure. tough. It's I'm... tough to watch something that I was so passionate about that I put so much into, um, exist in a, such a different way than I saw it. But at the right. same time, I, and, you know, there's like, but you also went through turmoil with it. Also, you yeah. went through the lowest of the low. Yeah, but I just see it as it's a part of my journey to yeah. just accept that I don't have control over these types of things, and mm -hmm. I just have to be happy for my friends that they have a sponsor and they, yeah. you know, Cole gets to design and make cool shoes, and I just, you know, I just keep trying to focus on what I'm doing and not really worry about it. So, and how did that make you? Did you have any? Like issues or things going back to Fallen when this all came around? Because you obviously knew all of this story yeah, that totally. Jamie's telling. No, totally. But because of what he built and it being so special to me, it, it made all the sense in the world to me because I didn't go through the turmoil that right. he went through with it. So it, it didn't have any sort of like a tinge of like, uh, I don't know, of anything to me it was just kind of like oh my god i get to make i get to make the trooper again you know? oh yeah that's yeah, 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 yeah. kind of did you have what? a conversation with jamie about it or you just went for it uh no we did oh you did yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. i mean that's a cool thing that you have with fallen you have nostalgic stuff there mm -hmm. you know people grew totally. up on fallen a lot, a lot of shoe companies don't have that true yeah you know i mean you you would know most you're a, uh, oh dude you're i'm doing the s thing yeah so. for sure but that's like you know you have to love what you're doing i could tell that you love the shoes and what you built yeah it's it's pretty uh it's it's kind of it's interesting to want to design more in new stuff yeah when you have the old nostalgic stuff that means so much but like you just keep doing colorways of it and you're happy to have it out for people who grew up on it and want it but you also want to do new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it is like, it is tricky because you, you kind of want it all at the same time. Yeah. So there Man, we are. What a journey. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I, I mean, thank you for telling us all this because oh, like, yeah. it's incredible to, you know, um, business and skateboarding isn't always, you know, like glitz and glamour and you know i mean like oh, business. business and skateboarding is very difficult. It is the most, skateboarding goes in these waves it's up it's down it's crashing it's rising it's like it's the hardest thing and i feel yeah. like skateboarding has a ceiling to it you can't we can't sell a skateboard to somebody in wisconsin who lives on a farm there's no reason for him to buy a zero board it is you know what i mean it is a trip though to to look at other brands in other places because you'll see a a small guitar company that's like barely hanging on mm. and they sell so many guitars they have like a massive warehouse and stuff like that and you're like this isn't even one of the top like the top 10 mm. you know what i mean okay so when you do that and knife companies and things like that that sell to the general yeah. public you know like you can imagine probably the smallest soccer ball company sells way more than we would sell in skateboarding true. of anything mm. true true yeah it's an, it's a hard business. Yeah. It's I just very don't, hard. I don't understand Jamie personally. Like incredible what you've done, uh, both of you guys. But like I trip out on you with just being on that business guy, designing shoes, working with team riders, filming them, going out and skating and filming video parts. How do you? How did you ever find? Was there ever a balance to it all? And and, and having a family. 
There was never like how did you do it? it was how, so, how can one man be so lucky? I, I, how could how could you do, how that's so I was, much? I was a workaholic. Yeah, I'm a recovering workaholic. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, I mean, we're laughing at it, but I, I am. Yeah. Really, that's you know, shit I, right I have reprioritized my life to not be that man anymore. Yeah, um, just as if it were a drug. Success were my was my drug.